Hi everyone, it's me, Daniel J. Hogan, back again for another video. I know it's been a long time since I did a video, but, you know, what with the holidays, and then I got a cold, and then I had, you know, new video games, video games to play, new dogs to meet, and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, so, been busy. Anyway, I got a question the other day on Instagram, and I'm at Claritron on, on Instagram here about what pens I use, so I thought I'd just do a quick rundown of the different pens I use for cartooning and sketching and all that sort of thing. So the first pen I have here is a um, Uniball Jetstream. Uh, this is my everyday carry pen. It's just a basic, you know, kind of ballpoint, but I like it a lot. It works really well. Um, it's great for quick sketches and that sort of thing. and writing notes if I have a pen on me anywhere that's not my drawing table it's usually this pen it's good they're easy to find and I just bump the camera so take a drink you can find them at most office supply place um, I specifically use the uh, um, 0 0.7 size so it's a little finer than the ones you may find at like your staples or something I got these on Amazon they're pretty easy to get there. Um, when it comes to inking pens, I use these three um, lately. These are Kurataki pens. And they have different sizes here. The lightest color here is the smallest size. The deeper blue one here in the middle is the medium size. And then the black one here is the biggest size. If you watched any of my Inktober videos of me inking cartoons, and you can find those on my YouTube channel, or on danieljhogan.com, um, I was inking with these pens. And uh, I like these a lot. These are my go-to inking pens right now. So this one here, you can see, it's a pretty fine, you know, line. It's got some line variation, but not a lot. This is the Next size up, so a little, little bigger. Yeah. And then after that, it's the, the big size. This one was actually my go-to all-purpose inking pen for a while until I bought the other two sizes. So I like this one a lot. This is a good... It's kind of a good in between a brush pen, which I'll show you in a minute, and uh, micron pens, which I'll also show you in a minute. So this one's got a thicker stroke here, but you can get kind of thin if you're careful and you got time, and you can get pretty thick lines on it too. So I like these ones a lot, as I've already said. Uh, they are waterproof. Um, but I do recommend if you're going to use watercolor or something with these, let the ink sit for a few minutes just to be safe. Because you never know, never hurts just to let ink your drawing and, you know, go take a break for a few minutes and then go back and apply paint to it. Um, for brush pens, I use the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. So what I like about this is you can get some really fine details or you can do some really cool stuff. So this actually has, unlike the other pens, a, a real brush tip. It's a nylon tip. And that gives you this, these weird variations. I, I like it. It's, it's fun. They're, they're readily available at most art supply stores and they're refillable. So as you can see, I'm actually running low on this one. I need to reload this. <clears throat> they're very easy. You just pull that cartridge out and put in a new one and just give it a minute to refill and uh, it's good to go. Uh, this is more water resistant than waterproof. I mean, you I have used it with watercolor stuff. I definitely recommend if you're gonna use watercolor paints with this pen, you for sure let your inks sit for a bit to dry and then be very precise and careful as to how you paint around your inked lines with this pen. You should be okay if you're not overdoing it with the water, but I have had them bleed a bit, but you may want that effect too, so just be careful. On the other end of the spectrum, for more precise control, I have these Micron pens, 
which um, when I first started cartooning about six years ago, these were the only pens I ever used. Not specifically these sizes, but this type. So these are the Microns. Um, they have very, very fine points here. Hopefully you can see. I'll get up on my camera there a bit, see how tiny that is. This is the O2, which means it's actually 0.3 millimeters. I don't know why they just don't make it the three. I never understood that. Anyway, so you can see how fine of a line that is. And so you can get some really, really tiny details, which is good. Um, they're good for writing, too, if you want. By which I mean, you know, lettering. These are good for lettering because they're very precise. And this is the uh, 08, which is actually 0.5 millimeters. So a little bigger. These ones are waterproof and allegedly fade proof and archival and all that kind of stuff. So these are really good if you are going to do some watercolor and ink mixing. Again, just to be safe, let your paint or sorry, let your ink dry a bit before you start inking stuff. Uh, when it comes to watercolor, these are the this is what I use. Oops, wrong one. Sort of. Uh, I use the Pentel Aquash water brushes. So they're just a, a reservoir that you fill up with water, and then they have a little. Uh, tip with a, a real nylon brush. I like these a lot and I've been using these pretty much exclusively since I got them uh, About a year ago, maybe last summer. I can't remember um, They're super handy They're portable. I mean I keep these in my bag when I go places so I can watercolor stuff on the go uh, Case in point uh, Here's my travel kit. This is a Sakura Koi watercolor kit 12 color I have a review of this on danieljhogan.com and in my YouTube channel, so just search for that. So the way this works is you just get your, your paint, you squeeze the barrel here so you get some water on the tip, and then you start painting. Pretty easy. And then you can just clean it by running it on a sponge or paper towel. I tend to use paper towel or a napkin because it has a little more grab to it and then you just you know go to your next color you can mix or whatever and it's fun i like it a lot these are great so that's the pentel aquash water brush um and speaking of those i also use them to make ink washes. So here's some three ink washes I made. Uh, this is black obviously, this is blue and red. So the way you make these is you um, fill them up to about about the top with water then you start dropping in drops of ink. Start with about three and then go from there. I think this gray one took me about five or so. The blue might have been, I mean, roughly. I, I put a lot in this red. This red hasn't really gotten to the the um, shade I would like it to get. You can see it's still kind of pretty faint. Like I kind of want more of a deeper red out of this, but um, it works though. And here's the gray. I use the gray one a lot. It's it's a lot of fun for adding some definition to sketches in your sketchbook or you know drawings. Here's the blue. <clears throat> yeah, so those are my different ink washes I did using the, the Pentel uh, Aquash water pens. <coughs> Excuse me, still getting rid of that cough. Um, one thing to note though with these when you're doing use them for washes these will get clogged eventually so you these won't last forever you will have to get a new one and toss this because they just that's just how it is they just get clogged because the ink clogs it up a bit but i've had this one for a while now so it's still going all right uh one other pen 
that I use. Not specifically just this one, but this type. This is a Pilot uh, G-Tech. These are good for, again, some of the microns if you want like fine lines and that kind of stuff. I don't necessarily use these for final cartoons. I'll use them for notes in my sketchbook or sketching and I knocked the camera again. Hooray. That sort of thing, but see, that's not quite dry yet, but but I like these. I got them on Amazon. They're fun. Just if you want colorful pens to like color code stuff in your notebook, that's they're good for that. Uh, on the pencil side of things, this is a light holder I use. A term which my wife Stephanie loves teasing me about. Uh, and that's, that's what it's called. It's called a lead holder. So I got like a thicker bit of lead here, and then I got the wood body because I just you know it's kind of mimics holding a real pencil. I think I have a HB lead in here, which is uh, you know some kind of a darker lead. I like it if I'm just doing fast and loose sketching. You know, it's good for that. I don't really use this for I'm doing like final drawings, like commissions or stuff I'm going to clean up. And uh, I'll show you what I do use for that instead because it's going to be a lot of work to clean these dark lines up. But if I'm just doing like, if I know it's just going to be a pencil sketch or I'm not worried about cleaning things up, I'll definitely use this because I like the uh, the flow of it. And I do need to get a sharpener for this so I can kind of get a point on it. I keep meaning to do that. For drawings that I'm going to clean up or commissions at shows or comics, this is what I use. It's a Pentel Graphic Gear 800. It's a 0.5 millimeter, I believe, in size. So a really, really fine point drafting pen. I got this from an Art Snacks kit a year ago, and uh, I like it a lot. It's uh, Originally, I was not really using mechanical pencils like this at all, and then I got this one, and I've been using it pretty much exclusively since I got it, because I like it a lot, because it's a finer line, and that's good when you're when you know you're gonna clean up stuff. It's less to erase because these these big thick dark lines are more work to erase than these are. So when it comes to erasing, I got two things I use. I use this uh, Tombow Mononoc eraser pen. It, I got this on JetPens.com. It's super handy. Very easy, you know. I probably wouldn't use it for like a big, you know, huge area, but it, for just about everything I throw at it, it handles it pretty well. I like it. Uh, for other big deal erasing jobs, I will use the um, kneaded eraser thing, and uh, this has held up pretty well. It's, you know, Tandy can handle, you know, most things pretty well. See, it took out that uh, darker lead from lead holder. Not too, not too... Uh, poorly. Um, I will say with this, you got to be careful that you're not going too hard with it because I have had pages bend or rip, you know, especially like commissions, that can be bad. So you just be careful when you're using that. Okay, so that's basically all the pens I use. Uh, as far as where you can get them, everything I showed you, I you can get for sure on Amazon. I don't know about the Pentel graphic gear yet because I got that through Art Snack, so I didn't actually buy that. Um, while you can get these Kurataki ones through Amazon, I recommend you go through JetPens.com to get them because they're um, you get them faster. And I think they might be a little cheaper too. I can't remember, but I remember when I was looking at them to get them through Amazon, it it was going to take weeks to get them, whereas JetPens I got them way less than that. So, uh, so thanks for watching. Those are the pens I use. Uh, please follow me on Instagram at Clattertron to see more sketches and artwork kind of stuff. I'm on Twitter at Daniel J. Hogan. Check out DanielJHogan.com for more videos, more reviews of art supplies, and the check on what I'm doing, especially this upcoming convention season. If you like my comics, my drawing, my videos, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Daniel J. Hogan. Uh, $3 plus patrons a month get early access to videos, so they'll get to see videos and read the new pages of my Foxes and Boxes comics first. And But you can just throw in a dollar a month too and still get access to other things as well. So please check that out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.